Hey everyone, welcome to a new video at Angular 2. In this video, we'll have a look at dependency injection in Angular 2. And I'll bring out another video where we will then actually use it in the code. Now what is dependency injection? Well, in a nutshell, we can describe it like that. We have an object A, which needs an object B to function correctly. Now object A could just create a new object B to work with that. Now that is what we see on the slide in Angular 2 world. We have two components, A and B if you want to call it like this, and both will need a service, which is just another class, which offers some functionalities both components need. Now one possibility would be to, for example, in the constructor, to create a new service object in each of those two components, like you see it here on the slide. Now doing it this way has some downsides. One disadvantage is that if our service changes, let's say it now the constructor of the service changes because the service itself might need some other objects or whatever, well then we have to change it in both our components. So it's very hard to maintain, especially in larger apps, because well we might need to go to several components to make changes there if we make one single change in our service which is used by several components. So that is really not too great. Additionally, it makes testing a lot harder or even impossible. So not the best way to solve this problem. Well, what is a better way? Well, instead of just creating instances of the service in our components, well, we can inject it. Now, injection basically means that in the constructors of our components, we tell Angular 2, hey, we need an instance of this service and then we bind it to a private property in the components. But we don't care how the constructor looks. We don't instantiate it. We just tell our framework, our dependency injection framework, which lives inside Angular 2, so to say, we need an instance of this service. You take care that I get this instance, okay? So that is basically how dependency injection works. We need something to work properly and we just tell our framework, Angular 2 in this case, you take care that I get an instance of this object. Now, to actually get an instance in Angular 2, we have, for when we're talking about components here, to add the providers, metadata to this components class to tell Angular 2 how to create such a service. But telling Angular 2 how to create a, such a service does not mean that we have to specify the constructor of our service or anything like that there. Now we just have to list the service in an array. But we will see this in the next video when we're actually writing some code showcasing all of those different concepts. Now in the example shown here on the slides, we inject our service in two different components, which are sibling components in this example, because, well, they are living next to each other, right? Now, the question is how many instances of our to be injected object does Angular 2 create? One, is it a singleton, or one for each time it injects it into an object? Because, well, it matters, obviously, in terms of when we, let's say, access or manipulate a property in our injected object from two different places and we only have one instance, well then a manip manipulation by object A will also be reflected in object B if we access this service on the injected object there because, well, we only have one instance of it and if this instance gets changed, well, it gets changed all over the place. Whereas, whereas if we have different instances, multiple instances, we don't have that problem, but we might have unnecessarily many instances. So either way, you could argue, well, you could argue in both directions. So how many instances does Angular 2 create? It depends. In the case shown here on the slide, we have two components living next to each other. So let's say they are sibling components, right? In this case, Angular 2 will create two instances because we will have to 
tell Angular 2 how to create such a service uh, which should be injected here in each of the components. Angular 2 uses a hierarchical injector, which means if we inject something on a root component, it is also usable in the child components. And those components will then share only one instance. However, if we inject it into several, well, sibling components, so to say, we create a new instance each time we do this. Basically, we create a new instance each time we specifically tell Angular 2 how to create such an object. Now, that is all the theory behind dependency injection. In a nutshell, obviously, you could go much more into detail there, but that is how it works generally in Angular 2. And I will have another video where we will actually try some of these things in a real, well, mini application or with real code. So, see you there and have a nice day. Bye.